Hey guys, Chris here with The Good Old Gamer. So today, once again, I want to talk to you guys about scalability. Just a couple weeks ago, I went ahead up and put up a video about Vega being a stepping stone and Navi being the future for AMD because of its scalability and that being the future of GPUs. Lo and behold, just a few days ago, we get information that NVIDIA is also working on very similar technology. Now, this is important because in the Navi video, I went ahead and said that NVIDIA is probably not going to just go ahead and let AMD blindside them like they did Intel. And since we didn't have any information past Volta, it made sense that they were possibly working on this technology. Now, this article is available on Tech Power Up. I also saw it on Guru 3D. And you can go ahead and actually read up on the architecture that NVIDIA is working on. But basically, they're talking about the one monolithic C or GPU rather versus you know many GPU cores with stacked DRAM. So it looks like they're still looking at HBM, but of course this could just be regular DRAM as well. So I would just take that with a grain of salt. Regardless, this is basically the same thing that I was talking about with Navi. So it looks like AMD is not going to have that massive advantage against NVIDIA that they do versus Intel right now. According to their slides here, there's very little difference between a monolithic uh, GPU versus multi-core GPU, multi-die GPU rather. Notice these bars aren't exactly one-to-one. -one. Obviously one large die will perform slightly better. However, for the cost difference, it just doesn't make sense, which I went over in my last video. The proof is obviously already out there with Epic and Threadripper about the launch, and we will see how close the Infinity Fabric really does come to that 100% scaling that AMD is talking about. So I'm not gonna go too in depth into the architecture here. You guys are more than welcome to click the link in the description below and read on this. I just wanted to bring this up and show that not only is AMD playing this game, this is clearly going to be the future for GPUs going forward. Now, I wanna flip the script a little bit and talk a little bit about Vega because in the Navi video, I explained why Vega is going to be so important for AMD. Not so much that it performs, you know, beats NVIDIA, but that their architecture is more on par with NVIDIA's. Now, the gaming performance that we've seen from the Vega Frontier Edition has been extremely underwhelming to say the least. Gamers Nexus has the most detailed review of the uh, Frontier Edition. I'm sorry, I keep wanting to count, call it the uh, Founders Edition. NVIDIA beat them to the punch on that one too. But regardless, uh, it's just kind of somewhere between the 1070 and the GTX 1080. And this performance level is absolutely not where anybody was really expecting this GPU to be. We were all thinking maybe between the GTX 1080 and 1080 Ti kind of as a worst case scenario, maybe 15% faster than the 1080, 15% slower than a 1080 Ti. And we're simply just not seeing those results at this particular point in time. Now there's tons and tons of reasons why this could be, and Gamers Nexus really kind of hit the nail on the head. Considering the Fury X is relatively close to the GTX 1070, at least at 1440p and 4K gaming, it would make sense to see why the Vega FE, or how close the Vega FE is to the Fury X at the same clock speeds. Now to me, this is the most important test that anybody who has a Vega FE has done. And the reason for that is we can clearly see from the benchmarks that the Fury X and Vega uh, Frontier Edition perform virtually identical across all of the tests at the same clock speeds. And what's also interesting is we're not seeing very good scaling from the 1050 megahertz up to the 1600 megahertz. It's just not performing as fast as we would normally expect a GPU with a 550 megahertz clock increase to perform. For example, I mean, if we go ahead and just take a look at Metro Last Light here, because we're just sitting here looking at it, I mean, these numbers are relatively identical, except the Fury X is actually winning. In most of the tests, the Fury X actually wins, except for at 1080p, the uh, Vega FE edition kind of kicks in, uh, especially at the 1% uh, lows and 0.1% low. Even if we look at a game like Doom, which we've seen running on Vega, demoed by AMD, if you look, even with the 1600 megahertz, it's barely faster than at 1050 megahertz and the Fury X is actually slightly ahead. So clearly the Vega FE card is not utilizing any of its performance benefits. None of the architectural changes are in effect here. 
This is clearly evident by the fact that it's performing virtually identical to the Fury X. So what's good about this is all the poor performance that we've been seeing, really we can just throw out the window as this is clearly not the performance that the card is going to be capable of in the future. Now, if we look at the productivity workload, um, this, these are tests that I'm not super, super familiar with, but this is their productivity test suite that they use over at Gamers Nexus. And what's really interesting is, is even at the same clock speed of 1050, the Vega FE is significantly faster than the Fury X. Actually, let me go ahead and I can just put up the percentages right in front of you. So we're seeing anything from 13% faster all the way up to 85% faster. Now, granted, those two are the outliers that I just said there. And if we throw those numbers out the window and go ahead and take the average of the remaining results, we're seeing a average increase of about 41% over the Fury X at the exact same clock speeds. That means, in theory, Vega has 40-ish percent more performance clock for clock than the Fury X. Now, we're clearly not seeing that in gaming right now. This is clearly something that AMD needs to fix as the architectural changes are not being utilized whatsoever. There are reports that the Vega Frontier Edition is not using its tile-based rasterization, which will be huge. This was the biggest performance boost to Maxwell over Kepler, and that really helped NVIDIA gain a strong lead over AMD for the past few years now. And this really kind of lets me know that Vega is not out of the running yet. But why is this important? Let me go ahead and show you here. So the Titan X Pascal, so basically the 1080 Ti, just the Titan version of it, I'm throwing up next to the Vega FE for comparisons. The shader core count is 12.5% higher on Vega FE. The boost clock uh, speed is 4.3% faster. Die size, 2.5% bigger. TDP, 16.6% higher. And the cost is just 20% lower. These are relatively equivalent GPUs. Now, what's really important, and the reason why everybody says that the Vega needs to compete with the Titan X Pascal, is because of this. It's virtually identical, or it's super, super close anyway. So if Vega with these specs cannot compete with the Titan X Pascal or the 1080 Ti with relatively close specs, there's no way that Navi is going to be able to compete with a scalable NVIDIA GPU if they still have a huge performance advantage. Now, like I said, we're talking about 12.5% more shader cores and a slightly higher clock speed. Now, if the Vega card ends up being, let's say, 5 or 10% slower than the uh, NVIDIA counterpart here, that's not really a big deal. That means they're close enough to where they can go ahead and it just depends on the scalability and the Infinity Fabric and NVIDIA's technology will have to come into play. So, whereas NVIDIA is saying that there's a little bit of a loss going from, you know, a monolithic GPU to a multi-die GPU, if AMD can keep near that 100% scaling, that can easily make up a good chunk of that difference. As you can see, the die sizes are relatively the same, so it's not like NVIDIA's GPUs will be much smaller than AMD's either. Uh, they do have to go ahead and figure out a way to bring down their TDP, which will be probably the next focus on NCU Gen 2. Regardless, this is the reason why people are freaking out about Vega's performance, because if they fall so far behind on IPC uh, that they can only produce a GTX 1080 level GPU with these specs, there's no way that they're going to be able to compete with NVIDIA ever again. And in all honesty, they would need a massive sweeping change that NCU is supposed to bring for them. And if this becomes their bulldozer of their GPU architecture, NVIDIA is not sitting on their hands. As I've shown you, they're going ahead and they're taking uh, AMD at their word. They realize that scalability is the way to go. They are seeing it in practice and they're seeing what's happening to Intel. So they're, they're going to go ahead and put up a good fight. So it's really up to AMD to prove to us that Vega and NCU can compete with NVIDIA. Uh, otherwise, you know, this, this is going to be a bad time because it looks like Navi will no longer be able to save them uh, because... NVIDIA is just going to be able to punch right back with uh, another scalable architecture. Alrighty guys, if you like this kind of video, please hit that like button, please subscribe, please share with friends. And if you like what we're doing here, please consider becoming a patron. For as little as $1 a month, 
you can really help us get more tech on hands and you know this way we can do hands-on reviews much like with gamers nexus their patrons help them get the uh vega frontier edition i would have loved to have done the uh all the benchmarking hard work ourselves they did an excellent job though so i want to give them a shout out on that and i want to also give all of our patrons our current patrons a shout out thank you uh, i have another video coming up shortly that you guys help make so stick with us and i will catch you in the next video